This is the National Geographic Channel. Log cabins. Rugged. Timeless. And connected to the land. I'm Nate Heim, and I build log cabin homes here in the Northlands of Minnesota. I work with the finest crew around. You betcha. Using century-old techniques, we pour ourselves into each and every cabin, bringing the past into the present. And we're building a massive two-story log home on the shores of a picture-perfect lake in Minnesota. Oh, boy. But these lakeside logs are going to test our building skills. No matter what happens, my crew and I are on a mission to build log cabin homes all across this country. National Guard. One weekend, a major pulls me aside and he says, are you the same Heim as that Heim log home truck outside? Now I get to build a log home for my superior officer. I better not screw this one up. The property is up in northern Minnesota and up in a gorgeous area by Lake Vermilion. It's rugged up here. The rocks are protruding out of the land. The winters up here are so brutal. They get 30, 40 below and then wind chills 70 below. There's nothing that gets through these logs. They keep you warm and safe. I can hear them. Yeah, this should be Nate. How'd you meet Nate again? In the National Guard. I saw his truck on the parking lot. Eric's wife, Jessica, is a former professional snowboarder and superbike racer, so I know they're going to want this house to be rugged. No way. <laughs> wow. And he's going to build our log cabin. Sorry, I came in hot there. Wow, it's gorgeous around here. I mean, you got the rocks, the terrain, the lakes. Well, tell me a little bit about the land. Lake Vermilion's definitely known for the red pine, Norway pine, beautiful rock outcroppings, the ledge rock. Perfect area. Wow. We want this cabin because I'm in the military. Time is valuable, especially family time. And being able to spend the weekends up here with my wife and our daughter is going to be wonderful. Eric and Jessica have a three-year-old daughter named Annika. They're excited to share this new log home with her and one day pass it down to her to continue the log home legacy. We have about five acres here okay. and about 275 feet of lake frontage. Holy smokes, I haven't seen this. Oh my gosh. <laughs> this is beautiful Lake Vermilion for wow. you at its finest. You see the island, you see right down the bay. I mean, look at this panoramic view. You can't ask for anything more. It's incredible. It is. It is one of a kind. Meeting up with Eric and Jessica was awesome. I knew it was going to be rugged terrain, but when I got there, their views are out of this world. There's no better place to put a log house. I think you're right. And I can see it. you got to see this spot. Oh, my gosh. Look. I mean, you could have the master bedroom over here and the kitchen facing the lake, so you have all those views. Yeah. And then check it out. Oh. Over here <laughs> it could be the dining room and the living room. I mean, you have all this open area and we can capture all the views on the windows on the long side of the house. Okay. And you can't build this house without a second level. Do you think? I agree. We're gonna go high. We're gonna build high and we're gonna catch all these views. When we first saw those views, we knew that that was gonna be the site. And we just hope that Nate can pull this off. Cause you know, I have a really big list, a lot of demands. Okay, well then that's what we need to do. We need to put it on paper and I'm gonna put a check in every one of those boxes for you. As Nate's superior officer, if he doesn't meet the deadline, he's gonna be doing push-ups. We're just gonna start putting down some ideas and see what we come up with, how's that? I'm all about it. We want to incorporate the natural Minnesota outdoors to our cabin. The large trees, obviously the water, the natural beauty that we have on our piece of property. Instead of doing a traditional pitch dormer, I think we should do a shed dormer. It's basically the roof just lifts up and what that does is it allows for more usable area. Okay. You can have a bathroom in there and maybe some big windows. So it's going to create even more livable space up more there? More livable really? space. Really? That's what I want. Uh, a shed dormer is basically an extension of the roof line by building a wall underneath it. It gives more usable headroom in a second story loft. But just keep in mind, we just don't want something that's cookie cutter. Okay. We want character, we want some pizzazz too. Me and the boys are gonna make it happen. For Eric and Jessica, the ground floor will feature two 12 by 10 bedrooms 
in a full bathroom. The open kitchen area flows into the great room, where the floor to ceiling windows showcase the beauty of the outdoors. A custom locked staircase takes us to the second floor from the upstairs master bedroom and loft. You can look down to the great room and gaze out through the dormer window onto the bounty and natural beauty of Lake Vermilion. We're gonna go shopping for logs. We're excited. And I'll make sure they come from this area. We got a hot one. What's up? New host to build. We got some plans there, eh? Yes, we do. So this is Eric McCowan's home, all right? So we're going to be up in Cook, Minnesota. Oh, that's a rugged country up it's there. It's damn rugged. So we're going to use 24 to 28 inch diameter trees, big ones. The Minnesota red pine that we're using on Eric and Jessica's cabin are gigantic. Their massive size will add energy efficiency and warmth that they can enjoy all year long. He's a major in the National Guard, so he's very keen on attention to detail. So John, he doesn't want any of the knots cut off, so that's gonna be real tricky with uh, scribing. I'm, 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 I'm dropping on you, I'm again. dropping on you. Right, well, we got right. some practice, we'll get yeah. some more practice. That's right. That's where it all starts, really, is in the scribing. It's the key to the whole accuracy of the whole building. It's always a privilege to be asked to do it, so I'm proud to do it and I like to do it. There's gonna be some big logs. I'm gonna need some help rolling them. Yeah, Joe will be there to help you. All right. You're crying already? <laughs> <laughs> and another thing is, he's my superior officer, so if we don't do this right, guess who's gonna get it? Okay. <laughs> well, it runs downhill. You're gonna be uh, peeling potatoes in the kitchen, maybe, huh? KP duty. I haven't been there for a while, and I don't wanna be. But the only peeling we're gonna be doing here is peeling logs. Corey, you're up. Oh, come All on. right, guys, we need to get on the chainsaws. John, you're scribing this whole thing. Ooh, All right, all right. it's better than peeled potatoes. Let's make some like sauce. Right. You know, with this first log, we're looking for a straight log. We want a good sized log to really hold that load uh, of the weight of the log home because the log home is very heavy and that's gonna give us our good starting point on our foundation. We engineer the logs and build the shell here at our log yard in Kellier. Once the shell is done, we'll send it to Cook where it'll be reassembled and completed. Well, we've just laid this new log up here on the wall that we're gonna scribe down. This is called scribe. This is the key to all the accuracy of all the fits. It has a two-way bubble on here to sight, and these are pens, and they write on the, on the logs. It tells us where to cut. Scribing is putting a line on the log at the points that you want to cut. This log has to be cut out so it can fit down over this log. So actually, it's drawing the contour of the log below. It's drawing this contour on the log above it. When you get that scribe perfect, and then you bring that log back after notching it and set it back down and it fits perfectly. It just brings a lot of satisfaction. The body of the shell is almost complete. Before we start on the roof system, we have to cut and set the cap log. The cap log will cover all the joists on the loft side of the cabin. The side without the joist will be the great room that the loft overlooks. Here we go, cap log, I'm coming to get ya. So we're gonna set it up there. We're gonna rough scribe it, bring it down. Work it. And when we set that, 10 notches and it's locking right in there and everything fits like a glove. I mean, that's an awesome feeling. This is one of the most exciting logs in the house. That fits perfect. All right. It's getting down to the end. It's a good feeling, it's the second level. This is the roof system. Yeah, when we see this uh, truss go up, that means we're around the home stretch. We've been working on it for a couple days. You want to do it right the first time. It's a lot of time going into these trusses. All our measurements are taken off of our, our string lines. We 
we project the roof system, and then we pull our measurements off the string lines and then build it. So there's no guarantees it's gonna fit even. We're crossing our fingers, everything was done right, and we're gonna put it up there. We don't got all day, we gotta get this thing up. This is a 6,000 pound truss hanging around your guys. You know, you gotta move really slow. Just a game of inches, it really is. You know, believe it or not. Are you lined up? Lining it in up. A little bit more. Is that the center line there? Matt's about six inches off the center line. Oh boy. We started building this house in the winter time, but as the ground thawed, our foundation moved a little. Boy, we're off center. Uh-oh. We gotta get that post down. This is a big problem. If we have to take the truss down to remeasure and recut, it's gonna set us back at least a day. In log homes, the bigger the size, the bigger the problem. Those gotta come down a long way, don't they? We just gotta spread it out so we can come down a little more. The A-frame is kind of holding it up. When you put a truss down, it needs to sit flush with the ends of the walls. Otherwise, it's back to the drawing board and it could cost us a lot of time. The peak's gotta come over about six inches to get the peak lined up. So what we're gonna do is bring the bottom over about four inches and down about an inch. We're gonna cut a little more out of this log so that this can come down and over. That's it. Back online. Hey, boys, looks good. I love the character. It fits good. Matt's working on the king queen posts, and let's get those bad boys up so we can uh, get it from going. Okay, we gotta go that way. The purpose of the king queen posts is to transfer the load from the roof system down to the wall logs. It gives the end of the house a nice appeal and actually serves as an engineering purpose. <laughs> In the last three weeks, we've made a lot of progress. We're on the home stretch now, and all we got left to do is set a few logs over the king and queen posts. The middle one is a king post, the tallest one, and the two next to it are a queen post. That looks great. I gotta get up there and check that out for myself. It's like a maze. <laughs> this is exactly what Eric's looking for. I mean, gorgeous, lots of room up here, precision fitting. Let's head out to the front and go take a look at our work. Come and check it out. Come on, come on. Look at that, guys. Great job. That's what I'm talking about. Matt, you're cutting wood like a hot knife through butter. I like it. My pleasure. That's what I do. All right, boys, let's tear this thing down and get it up to cook. Good job, everybody. is complete, we're gonna tear it down, load it on trucks, and ship it off to Cook, Minnesota, where we'll reassemble and completely finish Eric and Jessica's cabin. I look at Peter. No helmet, no harness, just balls. Peter won't fall. He's got his spidey sense working for him right now. When I'm working up high like this, I feel like I'm in my natural element. It's peaceful up here, just me and the logs. Good to go! The Dowling's house is coming down really good. We're down to the fourth, fifth course. That's what happens when you have big logs. It doesn't take many to get up to the top of the wall, and it doesn't take long to take them down. Last log, boys! When I'm taking a house apart, you know, it, it's kind of bittersweet. It's sad to see it go, but it's also awesome knowing that it's going to its final spot. And I can't wait to see it up in Cook, Minnesota. Thank you.
The last time we were here, there was snow on the ground and the lake was frozen. But now spring has sprung and the blossoms have blossomed and there could be a more gorgeous place to build a log home. I've got my building crew with me. John, Matt, and Corey from the log yard and the log father himself, my dad, Ron Heim. The guys in the red, they're the electricians. And my right hand on these builds, Grizzly Bob Kennel. Grizzly Bob is a veteran in the log crafting business with a wealth of knowledge, but he's a real stickler for detail. And man, is he obsessed with grizzly bears. Yeah, okay. We got work to do today. Move the trailer, bring the trucks in, let's get her done. All right, Bob. Eric and Jessica got the land cleared, the foundation set, and now it's time to lay some logs. And our goals for today is that uh, we want to get our first three courses down, get all the electrical run out, and get the bolts down, secure this first course. That's the most important thing. If we can get a couple courses above the electricals, then we're going to be doing great. Those rods sticking up are the anchor bolts that are used to secure the first course to the foundation. It's a new building code, and we don't know how it's going to impact the shell that we built. Four and three quarter from the outside edge, John. John is laying a foam seal over the sill plates and sliding them over the anchor bolts so we can get our first log set. First log off! These are anchor bolts. They're used to hold down the logs. We slide the first course of logs down. They're bolted down on top of this. That's what the new building standards calls for. After that log is down, this is the first course. We cut the bolts off even with the top. We put on a nut and a washer. Those are tightened down after we square the courses up. And that way the logs, nothing can move. If a truck bumps into them, that whole house is gonna stay still forever. Now that the plate logs are set, we're ready to start laying those first two courses. We got the gasketing material going into the laterals right now. These guys are stapling it in. The one on each side of the laterals, to sure we got a good weather seal back and forth. And no matter what you do, the moisture gets in, and that's why you're putting this in. It just it kills all of that. Heads up. Go on down, Ron. They're not lining up. Twisted mess. This side's got to go in a half. It's starting with this log down here by the looks of it. I got a nice gap. Got the scribe lines down here. Yep. The bottom one needs to come this way towards us. How many fit tight? Done. The anchor bolts that are put in the first course is a new step that has been added to the building code. We've never done that before, and Matt's telling me the logs aren't fitting right. I gotta get a closer look and see what's going on. So it's on its marks, it just isn't fitting, or what? Look at over here. See, like, look at here. There's a gap up there. It's, it's not sitting down. When logs don't fit, it gets frustrating. And, and for instance, on the first course, that can slow us down right from the get-go. That log over there, there must be a gap like that above the top of it. We're gonna have a huge problem because the house is only gonna get worse as we go off. The diagonals are gonna increase in being off measurement. We're not gonna be square and our roof lines are not gonna match up. When setting those logs on those anchor bolts, you gotta make sure you have enough room so the log can have its little bit of movement for fine tuning. We didn't drill our hole big enough from the get go to allow space for that anchor bolt to move around. So we're gonna have to pull all the logs off and re-drill that hole a little bit bigger. I don't generally enjoy doing something twice, but I've been building long enough sometimes to do it three or four times. <laughs> Two more logs, we'll be back where we were two hours ago. So that's happy about that. Looking good. Looking a lot better than what it was. We're doing great today. We got all the floor joists up. We're gonna be setting this cap log on pretty good. We're up to our full wall height right now. So I think our progress is, is moving right along. All right. We put fiberglass insulation between the logs to weatherproof it and to add extra energy efficiency to the log shell. Ten notches and she's off. Going for the big fit. Okay, now we just got some fine tune adjustments. We're gonna bump them over, fine tune it, and, and I'm sure she's gonna fall right into place. How's it looking, Bob? 
Yeah, this one looks good. I think we got her, Nate. Let's get going on the roof. I like the sound of that. 10 for 10. With the cap on fitting perfectly, we can set the trusses and purlins for the roof. We're putting up the third purlin right now. We only got two left, that's a good sign. After these two purlins, then we can start getting ready for tongue and groove when it shows up. Hey, here they are right now. Tongue and groove is uh, like a puzzle. It has a male and female end and fits together. We're gonna be using it on the roof, on top of the floor, and on the walls. Jessica! Man, I was blown away Jessica showed up. It's always awesome to see the client's expression when they see their log house. This is amazing. It's incredible. My That's husband awesome. is gonna be so excited to see this. There's more around here. Oh my goodness. Well, what do you think? This is incredible. I was just in awe. The cabin is just huge. You're gonna have the grand staircase leading up to the loft area. And over here is your fireplace. It's a toolbox right now, but just envision it being a fireplace. <laughs> yeah, Nate did an awesome job. The inside of the house looks amazing. It looks spacious, it looks so authentic. Wow. What do you think of this? This is incredible. I mean, you have these gorgeous views of Lake Vermilion from your loft. You can see all the way across the lake. I love it, I think you've done a great job, but there's one change. Okay. I'd like to have like a reading area. Okay. Just an area, relaxation room, place where we could just chill. Okay. Relax. And so you just want to kind of downsize the bedroom a little bit and, and just put another room here? Yes. You guys have already talked about this? <laughs> well, I'd like to surprise my husband with this. Oh, okay. I think it would mean a lot to him. Yeah. And uh, I just think that this would be a really special place for us. Okay. Can you do it? Oh boy. That can take a lot of time that we don't necessarily have. I wasn't expecting this. <sighs> that's, a, that's a big task and uh, if you want to make this part of your dream, we're going to make it happen for you. You can really do this for us? Absolutely. Eric's going to love it. Thank you so much. I am so excited. John, Joe, the change Jessica is asking for requires us to build a whole new wall, sectioning off part of the current master bedroom, creating a nook that overlooks the great room. We got a last minute curveball from Jessica. She wants to surprise Eric with a reading nook in the loft. This could take a lot of time that we don't necessarily have. Bob and I have a commitment to participate in a huge event. We're gonna have to hit the road, but I trust my guys to handle the reading nook for Jessica. It wasn't on the plan, so but I told her we'd make it happen. We got a fundraiser in Wisconsin we gotta go to right now. It kind of snuck up on us. But John, can you make sure this happens by the time we get back? You gotta lay it out right, we'll do it right. All right, sounds great. <laughs> hey, perfect guys, thanks a lot, John, for overseeing this project. Bob, we gotta head out, we gotta get to Wisconsin. On our way. Thanks, guys. Building log homes isn't just a skill, it's a passion. Once a year, the Great Lakes Log Crafters Association gets together in Sealy, Wisconsin and builds a log shell and auctions it off. It's to spread awareness of handcrafted log building and to fund the association. I'm excited to get to work with my dad and all the master craftsmen who will be here this week. We're gonna build a building here and it's gonna be a 24 by 26. Oh, neat. But we only got four days to do it. Four. It's gonna be- Four days. We're gonna have to push. Why? Because we've advertised to sell it at an auction on Saturday. No kidding. Man, those guys are crazy. How are we gonna build a house in four days? We gotta have everybody clicking like a clock in order to get that done on time. We're gonna do a little different than you do it, Nate. Okay. We're gonna do a round notch. The round yeah. notch. We're not gonna use a saddle notch. A round notch is faster to cut. No saddle notch? Man, these guys are old school. It'll be a good learning experience for everybody. Okay. A saddle notch is where you scarf the log, and a round notch is where you scribe the log over the existing round log. It's a much simpler and easier way of doing things, so I'm gonna be brushing up on some old techniques. This educational workshop is like all-star game. The great log crafters from the Midwest and Canada get together and we build a log shell. And nobody's on their high horse. Everybody comes in there with their own ideas of how they build. The end result is the same. Beautiful craftsmanship of log homes.
This has been a great week. After four days, we've almost got the shell done. It's awesome to see these guys come in from all over the region, get together, and build a log home for a great cause. And on top of that, I get to spend quality time with my dad. Keep fit logs like this, we'll be done in no time. You got your chainsaw? You know I do, it's All always right. here, ready to go. Well, let's fire it up, see what you got. All right. Let's go. That's why we're here, you know. Some guys don't run saw like they used to, but here they have the opportunity to start it up and let the old sawdust fly again. They'll get it prepped for you. It's great working with my dad. We had opportunity to to work a whole log ourselves and, and you know he was right there with me on the notches and the laterals and you know it was like old times when he was teaching me how to do log work and uh, yeah, it was kind of fun a little friendly competition is always good we can smile and look at each other and uh, it was kind of a moment there good. we're having a good time and then my dad tried to give me this weird elbow high five and ruined any moment that we had going so i guess it's time to get back to work What we're doing right now is we're putting our final log on. This is called the cap log. It goes over top of the floor joist. It's our last log that's going to be on here. Once you get this on, we got everybody on this. It's the end of the day. We're shooting for our time frame. Things are going good. We've got to bring it back down. We're going to saw these notches in. we got nine notches on one log to cut. So we're going to have nine guys sawing at the same time. It's going to get done. This is the end of the project. It's not dark yet, so we feel good. We're making our time frame. Okay, Great Lakes volunteers, this is our last log. we got nine notches over nine joists, nine cutters. Ladies and gentlemen, start your engine. This was an awesome experience. A lot of guys put a lot of blood, sweat, and tears in this project, and you know, it went really smooth. And but we're not done yet. We got an auction tomorrow, and I mean, we, we can't break even. We got to make some money. Well, good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the Great Lakes Log Crafters Association auction. Today, we're going to auction off this building. Dwayne, go ahead. Okay, I'll open up the bidding. Can I have a bid for 15000 to get us started? Looking for a bid of $15,000. I have a bid of $15,000. Do I hear seven? I thank you, $17,000. Man, this shell turned out awesome. We really came together for a great cause, promoting awareness and keeping handcrafting alive. Looking for $20,000. I have $20,000 in the front row. Do I have $20,500? Looking for $20,500. When this cabin sells, the money will go towards our association to keep it running so that the legacy of hand craftsmanship will be handed down to future generations. This shell is gonna make a wonderful home for its new owners. They're gonna be able to take that shell and build a home that's gonna last forever. After a successful week here in Sealy, it's time to get back to Cook and see how the guys are doing on Eric and Jessica's cabin. I just got back from the GLLCA and the guys are hard at work. I can't wait to see how the reading nook that Jessica requested turned out. Hey, hey. Wow, check out that sitting area, huh? Yeah. <coughs> Putting a little railing in front of this little nice sitting place here. Got a nice wood uh, panel wall here. Yeah. You look here right out the lake. Got a clean view of the lake. Big picture windows over there. Great job, John. You even cut in a little outlet box in the post, huh? Yep. This post is solid, too. It's locked right into the floor joist here. John did a great job on the reading nook that Jessica requested. He built a stick wall, added some tongue and groove, and built a masterpiece of a log railing. I mean, this is exactly what Eric and Jessica are looking for. It's going to be cozy. Nice rail here. You got the views of the lake. Beautiful view. You know, now that we got this knocked out, let's take care of the railing and we'll put that staircase together and get that in place. Okay. Today we're using a mortise and tenon joint to build a McGowan staircase. It's a simple, strong joint that woodworkers have been using for a thousand years. 
It's made by fitting a board with a protruding piece of wood, a tenon, to a board with a hole, a mortise. When they come together, they fit strong and snug. So now we're gonna put this top piece on the stair. It's gonna be a little touch here because you're not putting individual pieces in. You're putting this whole top piece on top of the treads. Hit this one over, John. A little bit more. Just doing some fine tuning, uh, knocking some edges down so they catch in the mortise. That's fine tuning right there. It's all fitting together good. We're gonna lean it down. We're gonna get our lifting mechanism in place and uh, put her to its home. Perfect. That's probably about a thousand pound staircase. The staircase is hoisted and it fits perfectly. Now it's time to anchor it to the floor joist, which will secure it to the frame of the house. We want to secure this stairway so it doesn't fall down. We have this big lag bolt. We're going to put it in there inside the floor joist here. So I'm going to drill the pilot hole, put it right in here. So it'll be inside of the stringer there. That's it, John. Nice and tight, fits good, locked in. We can drop the winch down, we got this baby all done. Nice and level. Nice and level, perfect. And what a staircase, huh? Beauty. Let's get these banisters up and that'll finish off our staircase. It'll make it beautiful. The staircase secured and installed, we're moving on to the doors, windows, and the other interior elements of this cabin. Fits perfectly. Yeah! Perfect. All right, nail it. They're gonna have quite a view. It's gonna be quite an American view over the lake there. As good as it gets. God's country. Tell you what, uh, I got one last door that we gotta hang. It's outside in storage. See if you can carry that in for us. We'll get it set up, place it, get that door hung. Two man job. Bob asking me to help him with this door is a pretty big deal. It's not often for him to ask me to do anything other than turn a log or get him lunch. Snakies. Soon here. I know. The corners are annihilated. Holy smokes! It looks like you totally wrecked the, the frame on that, but the door looks like it's in pretty good condition. I, I tell know. you what we gotta do. Let's get the pine out, get the table saw. I want you to learn how to build a door jam. If I don't get this fixed, I will never hear the end of it from Bob. And even worse, he'll tell Nate, I have to get this done. I give Corey a chance to redeem himself. There's no progress being made. He's actually making things worse. So I better just go build one myself. I got a nice perfect fit. The strike plate fits right in the little notch I made. Get this door back together, get it installed. Perfect. After all that, Bob built the frame without me. What do you think about that? Well, didn't you like all my work I did? Yeah, right. We're getting really close on the McGowan build, wrapping it up. All I got left to do is install the floor. Then it'll be decorated by my awesome interior designer. Just finished up the floor today. It looks great. A little bit of cleanup and touch up. We're gonna be ready for uh, the furnishings to come in. Mm -hmm. Come on, Heather. I made it. 
it just in time for winter. What's in the trunk? Lots of great stuff. Oh yeah? yeah. Well, are you ready to stuff a house? Let's do it. I want to see right. it. We're going with the Lake Vermilion theme. A little bit of military. Oh, that's perfect. A little bit of snow sports. What made news. you think of that? Using my noggin. Yeah. No, I mean, that's exactly what Eric and Jessica are looking for. See what's in there? Yeah, yeah, let's do it. Oh, I can't wait. You got it, right? Holy smokes, you weren't kidding. I'm really happy to finally be here. So this is a customized bed that the McGowans had specially made for the master bedroom. Beautiful. The thing I really like about designing cabins is the connection between the exterior and the interior, the outside and the inside. We have collected from the McGowan property these um, beautiful birch twigs. I'm just using it as kind of a facade decorative piece. It hides the baling wire and it's unique to this particular region. It's looking really great. With the McGowan cabin, I wanted to incorporate the military theme, but I wanted to be subtle about it. So this is a photograph that I shot personally. Um, I shot it in Gettysburg. It is the Battle of Bloody Lane. Eric's in the National Guard, and I really thought that he would have connection with it. That's great, thanks. Slightly fluff those up. The ribbons here indicate different rankings in the military, which I think is really awesome, and I think Eric is gonna have to get a quiz on it. Three feet to the top, so I mean, there's not a lot of places to put this. We got this far, so yeah, I think the best place, and it's going to look amazing, is right by the fireplace. So okay. let's just mosey just right on back there. to the wall. Yeah, let's just go back there. This is hand carved, done. Great, got it. Perfect. Rock and roll right here. Okay, I got to put that bathroom door in, and I think we got a wrap. All right. Anytime we complete a project, I'm super excited, especially with this one. It all came together exactly how I was wanting it, so I can be happier. Let's get tidy up and get ready for the McGowan's. All righty. Okay, great. We're getting really close on the McGowan build, wrapping it up. All I got left to do is install this last door, and we're ready to show this baby off. There it is. Oh, that's the way a door should fit. No slop, good reveal. Well, I guess it's time to go get the McGowan's and uh, show them their house. This is the big day we've all been waiting for, knowing that this day has come, that we've created somebody's dream. Being Eric's my superior officer, I hope Eric loves everything about the house because I don't want to be doing KP duty. Well, I can't wait to show you guys your house. Yeah, we're looking forward to it, definitely, Nate. Yeah, it well, doesn't seem like that long ago we came flying down this hill and this is where we met, huh? Nothing but raw land. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, it's a little bit different than just raw land now. Whoa, there it is. There it is. Wow, look at that. Look at those logs. Oh, wow. This is amazing. Wow. How That's you look? incredible. This is amazing. These logs are massive, Nate. Yeah. Unbelievable. It looks beautiful. Check this out. 18 foot dormer. All the views that you've ever wanted. Of Lake Vermilion. You're going to get some great natural light in there. That is spectacular. Oh, it looks wow. really nice. The shed dormer worked out really great. I could see when they looked up at it that they're just an odd. It's a great addition and gives dimension to the house. Well, you've seen the house from the outside. Why don't we go inside? Okay, yeah. let's do it. I'm excited. All right. I just can't wait to get in there. I'm pretty sure there's going to be some spectacular views uh, once we get inside, and I'm really excited to see that. Well, come on in. What do you think? Oh. This is amazing. It's all yours. Welcome home. It's absolutely incredible. Oh, look at that view from the kitchen. Wow. Welcome home. Wow. So what do you think of your kitchen? The countertops are fantastic. You go with the copper sink. It all flows really nice together. The slate colored appliances. It's like the dream kitchen. The copper sink with the beautiful granite countertops and the backsplash. Everything ties in so well. Right above the kitchen sink, there's a really neat light that's on a pulley system, and it is the coolest. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> that is really cool. Eric can adjust his light when he's on KP duty. <laughs> <laughs> I like the knots and the kitchen cabinets. That looks great. Well, you guys got to check out your great room. 
I mean, you got this vaulted ceilings that's letting all this natural light in, those big massive logs that are holding up the main structure of your roof. Yeah, I can't believe that ridge pole, look how massive that is. Yeah. That is, is wonderful. Incredible. I can't get over the size of those gable windows yeah. either. Unbelievable. Wow, I love the canoe. It's just so big and beautiful, and it really accents the centerpiece, which I think is the fireplace. Absolutely. Look at those curtain rods. Are those real yeah. tree branches? Is this real tree branches. That's birch, birch, right? Part. Yeah, oh, awesome. exactly. Eric, what do you think of this blanket? Do you recognize any of these stripes? Oh, I love it. It looks like a ribbon-themed blanket. It sure That's is. It's absolutely perfect on the couch and, and yeah. the with the trunk. Trunks. Yes. And Eric, this couch, doesn't this remind you of those uh, two the blankets? The old wool blanket, yes. And basic training that we'll never forget. No. That, uh, well, it doesn't end here. we got rooms to check out. Okay. Let's do it. Oh, let's do it. Look at the special bedroom for Annika. Oh, wow. that is awesome. Well, that bunk bed is amazing. Oh, the swing? <laughs> oh, wow. Is this a little girl's dream or what? It is. She's going to love that swing. Wow. She's going to love these bunk beds. And the best part of the house, in my eyes, is upstairs, and that's your room. Let's check it out. All right. I love this staircase. It's just so rustic, and the logs going all the way up the side here. Check out your log. Oh, when did this happen? This is incredible. You have the vaulted ceilings and the, and the views and the natural light. What an addition. I don't remember that being in the plans. It was all Jessica's idea. I wanted to surprise you. I had this idea of just having a nice, cozy area where you could come up here, relax, read some books. I just thought this would be a, it's a nice surprise. It really is perfect. Yeah. I mean, the views are just breathtaking. And the fact that my wife put this together with Nate and it was her idea, I think is absolutely fabulous. I'm looking forward to spending some time up there for sure. Well, and from here, you go right over into your master bathroom. What do you guys think of this? The copper tub is amazing. Yeah, it has so. so much character to the bathroom. Yeah. Well, I really like this sink. Well, it's unique here and it's unique in your bedroom. Wow. It's so much bigger than I anticipated. It looks wonderful, Nate. It really does. I, I mean, love the log furniture. It really ties into the theme of our cabin. Absolutely. It's so spacious. The loft just in general, when you look out through those gable windows, I mean, you can see directly across the bay. It looks fantastic. Before I take off, I got one more thing for you. Okay. We gotta go outside to get it. We're really looking forward to spending a lot of quality time up here with our family and our extended family for generations to come. Well, being that we're just wrapping up, I, I wanted to give you guys a, a bench I made, a little bit of spare time that I did. Oh, very that, nice. As a token of my appreciation for Thank allowing you very me much. to build your dreams. Wow. Thank you. Know, you. It's been an honor and sir. Now that I'm uh, done with the project, I'm wondering <laughs> if uh, I'm, I'm relieved to keep he duty. You are. You are. Thank All you very right. much. Roger that. All right. Thanks. Thank you very much. It was perfect. Thank See you guys later. Thank you, Nate. The cabin turned out just amazing. Definitely exceeded our expectations since we want this to be in our family for a long, long time.